Hey everyone, welcome to week two of PSAT 5A. In the first example today, we're going to work through just learning about basic notation for discrete random variables that you were introduced to in lecture. And what are the different calculations, PDF, CDFs, expectations, all that stuff. So in this first kind of simple example, I've got a random variable X. I'm given a PDF, which stands for, again, probability distribution function. In essence, it's telling you what are the possible values that X can take and corresponding probabilities. So in this first problem here, you're given a partially filled out PDF. We're missing one value. And for the first question, that's the value you're being asked to find. So what's the chance here that X is one? So that's going to be, what is this guy here? Now we're going to borrow some rules from chapter one. Uh, primarily this one that says the chance that I land in the sample space is guaranteed that has probability one. What that means for this particular problem is I'm talking about all the values of X. And if I'm given a table with a list of values, that means X can be any number between zero and four. Um, and in this case, they're just discrete. So these are the whole values from zero all the way to four. Now, if I have to be here, then that means the chance that I'm anywhere here must total one. So what that means is this probability here plus this one plus the 45 plus the pointer, that is equal to one. Another way of representing this prop property is the sum of all of your probabilities here must total one, right? And again, these are are right here the little x of i, so the different values that x could take. So if we go ahead and work that out, then I have this equation that says, well, the probability that x is 1 plus all of these other ones, so the ones I'm underlining here, I will go ahead and add all four of those numbers together, and that is 0.89. And I know that has to equal 1. And so by applying this property, I can now simply solve for this probability and get 0.11. So that'll go right here. And just to double check, I can make sure if I add all five numbers together, I do get one exactly. Now for the second part here, it's a little weirder, but again, what I want to do is I want to find the conditions that satisfy this particular event. So I have the event that says, numbers between 0.73 and 3. Another way of looking at that is I want to find all x's larger than 0.73 and at the same time smaller than 3. So if I go through my PDF and look, well, what are the x's that satisfies this condition? Let me go ahead and change colors here. I'm going to outline this in green. I want, again, two things, larger than 0.73, smaller than 3. So I see these are the two values here that satisfies this condition. So to find those probabilities, x can be either one of those. Another way of writing that is, well, this is just the chance that x is either 1 or the chance x is 2. And then using my addition rule from chapter 1, this ends up being the 0.11 plus the 0.31, or now finally I get 0.42. And that's the first part. All right, so for the second part, you are asked to calculate expectation of X. So E of X is notation here. Now recall, this has a Greek letter associated with it, which is the lowercase m called mu. And it's just a fancy way of saying, well, what's the average of X? So I know that X can take any of these values here, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And I know they're not equally likely because I have these different probabilities here. So what I want to do is I'm going to weigh all of that together and see, okay, well, if I had to pick one value for me to expect, what would I see? And just intuitively, if I look at my table, I see that these are the highest probabilities. So it's probably going to be somewhere close to that. 
Okay, but luckily again, I have a rule and a formula. So the formula we're going to use for expectation for discrete random variables looks like this. It's going to be the sum of all of these individual x's times their corresponding probabilities. So in other words, what I will do is I'll take each x value, multiply it by its corresponding probability, and then sum that for the entire table. So then I have a line that will now look like this. And we use the 0.11 we got from the previous part. And then 2 times 0.31. Add that to 3 times 0.45. Finally, add that to 4 times 0.08. And you can see the line here that we have is simply just this formula that I am plugging numbers into. So finally, the notation, if I do all my calculations, is again, the Greek letter mu, the average of x is going to be this entire line here. And if I worked it out correctly, this is 2.4, which kind of fits our intuition earlier of saying that the highest values were two and three. So it's somewhere in between there. And so this kind of makes sense. All right, so for the final part of this example on random variables, we're looking at the differences between PDF and CDF. So again, for this problem, we were given a PDF. We had to figure out a missing value. And then now you're asked to find a CDF. So if you recall, here's the big difference for the CDF, this part right here. So by definition, the CDF, which represents the cumulative distribution function, is going to be all of the probabilities less than or equal to x as compared to, so versus here, your PDF, which is the probability distribution function, and that only shows you probabilities at individual values of x. So that's the big difference here. So if I use my definition and the provided PDF, then for the first box here, what I want is I want the probability that x is either zero or less. Well, from the table that's given, all of the x's are just between 0 and 4. So the only x's that satisfies this condition here is just x being 0. So that means the probability that x is 0, while well, I have that from my table, is just 0 0.05. Now the first one's kind of straightforward. If we look at the second one here, then just again writing the definition, I have the chance that x is less than or equal to the number 1. And again, this is my new condition I need to satisfy all of the x's less than or equal to one. Well, now I've got two of them. I've got it could be zero or it could be one, which just means now I'm gonna sum the two probabilities. Let me highlight this in green. I now want to add these two together and that will represent the probability that goes in here. So just adding 0.11 and 0.05, I get 0.16. And then this continues by adding all the values over and over and over again. So if I finish this, then the next value right here for less than or equal to two will be all of the probabilities two or less. So now I'm gonna add the first three probabilities from my PDF table. And I'll get the value 0.47. And then if I continue the trend here, I'm going to get 0.92. And then here in this last one, this is the probability that x is less than or equal to 4. Well, all of my x's are less than or equal to 4. So really, this is what's the chance I land in the sample space? And we all know that this is guaranteed. So that's the probability exactly 1. And so that's kind of the basics of working with discrete random variables.